Hey guys, welcome to Rosie's Dessert Spot. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create this rustic fondant ruffle cake. There's a five inch cake that I've attached to a larger cake board with some buttercream. And I'm just decorating my cake on top. This is a five inch cake and I've used two in total to create a four layered cake. And my little, little spatula here is because I don't want to add too much pressure on my cake because smaller cakes like this, they're very light and they tend to become lopsided very easily. So if you use a regular size spatula, you might be putting too much force on the cake. Smaller spatulas work well with small cakes. Using my acrylic um, bench scraper here to clean up and then bringing that lip of frosting to the center. Pop it into your freezer for 10 minutes to set up. And here I've already prepared my seven inch bottom tier. So I'm just adding the final layer of frosting on top. Making sure the top is nice and flat. And then I'm adding a generous amount onto the side of my cake. And again, this is just the vanilla buttercream. The recipe for this, or the link to the video with the recipe and the demonstration, is in the description box below this video. Go around slowly with your bench scraper. I find the slower you go, the cleaner your finish will be. And then bring that lip of frosting to the center of the cake again. Pop it back into the freezer for 10 minutes while you work on your top tier and you'll be following the exact same steps as this one. Now for this cake, I'm letting it sit into the, uh, in the freezer for about 20 minutes because I'll be handling it with my hands later. These are bubble tea straws. I'm uh, putting five of them into my bottom tier and cutting it flush with where the cake finishes, so with the frosting. And this is there to support the weight of our top tier. I'm gonna attach it onto the cake with a bit of buttercream Releasing it from the cake board, just rotating my um, cake board with the spatula underneath until it moves, and then pop it onto your cake. Now we can start preparing our fondant decorations. This is white fondant. I like to use the Bakehouse brand, and I'm adding some black gel food color by Americola. I'm just folding it between my hands, and then I have some icing sugar. You can use cornstarch as well, just to make sure it doesn't stick to my bench top. Roll the white and black fondant together, give it a bit of a twist, and then fold it in half, roll it back out into a sausage, and twist it again. If you'd like a more concentrated or a thicker looking marble effect, you can keep following these steps until it's nice and um, kind of that pattern is very, very prominent. Roll it out to about uh, 1.5 mils in thickness, so pretty thin. And then using a spatula, I'm just creating waves. So strips of fondant, but rather than cutting a straight line, I'm just kind of waving it by. Do the exact same with some white fondant. In the meantime, my marbled fondant is actually resting between glad wraps so it doesn't dry out. And then we're applying this onto our cake with a little bit of water. So just regular tap water will do. And I'm being sure to adhere the fondant in such a way that it comes up and over the cake because that's going to create a dam for our um, edible beads when we apply them onto the cake. Make sure it meets on the other side. Again, just sticking up some water and then to make a bit more interest or to create a bit more movement with the ruffle, I like to pull back at the very, very top edge so it creates um, waves in your fondant. Going in with the marbled fondant here, and I've just popped this um, every now and again. I haven't added a lot of this because it adds some interest. Again, pulling back and making sure that the buttercream doesn't show through. At the very base of the cake, you want to cover that completely, so I've used thinner um, ways of fondant there. And follow the same step for your bottom tier. Always, always, always apply water with each layer that you add. If you add too much water, it tends to slip a little bit, so there is a good balance. Just moisten the cake a little bit and the fondant too. If you like the cake to look more delicate, you can cut your strips a lot thinner. I made mine thick on purpose to make it look a bit more rustic. 
Now to attach our little beads onto the cake and make sure that it doesn't um, kind of fall off, I have some glucose syrup mixed with water, not very much water at all, I'd say three parts glucose syrup, one part water, mixing it through with my brush and then applying it onto my cake. Pour your edible beads on top, I've used these really really tiny, I think they're one millimeter in diameter, um, edible silver beads. You can sometimes find these at Coles or Woolworths. I bought mine from either Suzy Q or Bake Boss in Melbourne. Do the same with your bottom tier. And just move them around so you um, cover up the whole buttercream section. Now to create the paint, I have some Platinum Silver by Creative Cake Decorating Australia. Pop it into a little saucepan and a uh, little saucepan, a little plate, and add your rose water on top. If you can't use rose water or any kind of spirits, you could always use um, vinegar or even lemon extract. I mixed it till it was a bit of a paste, and now I'm just applying that paint over the very edge of each of my ruffles. You can make it as thick or as thin as you like. The thinner it is, the more elegant it looks. So I just did the very top and then maybe a millimeter and a half down. And that's how it's done. And that's how you make a rustic ruffled fondant cake with the fondant adhered directly onto buttercream. I specifically made this cake because I've had a lot of people ask me Oh, um, Rosie, can you adhere fondant directly onto buttercream? The answer is yes, you can. I mean, this many layers of the ruffles and fondant, it's pretty heavy. And it's still staying on really, really well. So if you're scared to use buttercream, fear not. As long as it is um, American buttercream, I'm scared that with Swiss meringue buttercream, I haven't personally tried it, but it is softer, it doesn't crust. And so I'm worried that under the weight of these ruffles, they'll start dripping or drooping off. So might need to be careful with that one. Um, ganache would work really well too. Best case scenario is sticking fondant on fondant because it, it welds really well together. But yes, I hope this tutorial was useful for you guys. Give it a go, it's so much fun and not as time consuming as you might think. If you enjoyed this video tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We upload a new video every Tuesday. Thanks again and I'll catch you next week.